welcome to the West Side Culture Podcast. My name is Lane. I'm here with our senior pastor, Dr. Craig Kramer. And uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these, Craig, maybe even a couple of years. Uh, but I know people always enjoy hearing the heart of our senior pastor. So that's why we're doing this again. And uh, Craig, today you're going to be talking about the call to ministry. And uh, we're starting from uh, scripture from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. And I'm going to start reading that, and then we're going to hear from our senior pastor. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 8, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Craig, what do you have to share for us today? Well, when I think of the call and I look at Jeremiah, I remember looking at this passage deeply way back when I was in seminary. And one of my professors is one of the leading scholars in the study of the book of Jeremiah in the world. And as you dig into this, I read that passage as a young man. I initially read it and think, man, this guy's going to have an easy life. <laughs> Right? Like he's got this call from God, supernatural. God himself speaks to him. God has this plan. From before he was born, God had this plan for him. This was his mission. This was his call. He's set apart. He's holy. And God's going to use him in powerful ways. Nothing can come against him. Yeah, it's going to be easy from here on out. You would think. <laughs> but when you live life long enough, you realize that's not the case. And when I hear these words of him resisting, I can relate to that mm. in my call. I resisted God and thought, no, 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 you got the wrong guy. I feel like he felt that way. Moses felt that way uh, when God called him as well. Many of us do. And in the end there, this passage, when it says, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you. In my mind, I'm thinking he can be bold and go and do what God said. No one can come against him. And yet, if you know the life of Jeremiah, if you read through that whole book, it's a long, long book, but his own family threatens to kill him. The king is against him. He's put in stocks. He's uh, threatened. He's disrespected and eventually ends up in exile. It was not easy. No. And at times, he's whining and complaining and frustrated and really upset with God for this call. And yet God still was faithful. And we're all called differently. Some are called to vocational ministry. We're like, this is a call or a job. Similar, I would say, back in the Old Testament, when the tribe of Levi, they were set apart for ministry yeah. of the Lord and to the people and for the spiritual function of the life of the people in the temple and the tabernacle. And similarly, those who serve in vocational ministry are serving in that way. But we're all called. Right. And we're all called differently. And what I'd love to do is maybe turn back over to you, Lane, and just share with us, you know, you're a worship pastor. How did you sense, okay, I'm called to this? This is what you've done in your vocational life. Right. Yeah, you know, growing up, I was always surrounded by music. God had gifted me to, mm -hmm. to, to do that. And I did, even as a kid, was developing that skill. But even at that time, I didn't know that this is what I was going to be doing. You know, I was like any other kid. I want to be a pilot. I want to be this. I yes. want to be that. Who knows? Um, and it really wasn't until I was probably in college that I really felt God honing mm -hmm. uh, my heart to, to do what I'm, what I'm doing now. And so kind of growing up, that wasn't my uh, uh, goal. But then once I, I hit that college age, and uh, I really just felt a call in my heart to do that. But, you know, as I look back on this scripture, even though in my brain, I, I didn't really feel called to do what I'm doing now until about college age, I see that God knew before I was even born, yes. before he formed me, mm -hmm. that I was already called yes. to do what I was doing. It, I ju it just became a realization for me, probably in, in college. And how about you? I, I, I'm always interested in people's call to ministry. Uh, what was your call to ministry uh, yeah. like? And, and I agree with you. I look at this passage, and I think before I, I was born, God was shaping, and he, he, he knew what he was going to do. Yeah. And I look at Psalm 139. Every day ordained for you was written in this book before one of them came to be. Yeah. That's what Scripture teaches. He's sovereign. 
and we're all different. Your call is different than Jeremiah's, different than mine. And, and, and I understand this. Listen, as we're talking about the call, we're, as a Christian, we are all called to minister. Yes. Though it may not be our vocation, our job. This right. is how we make a living, per se. For me, I would say it's unique, and I look at this, and, and, and all of our calls are different. But like Jeremiah, I felt called in a very supernatural way. And it was unexpected. It wasn't something I was asking for, nothing I envisioned in my life. I, I look back and, and feel like that wasn't my gifting. And so for me, I had gone through the military. My college and training up to that point had been nuclear engineering. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm with my buddies, and a number of them came to Christ. God, I led a Bible study, a number of, of my friends, like all my roommates, they all became believers in Jesus. One rededicated, rededicated his life to Jesus. So that was really neat to be used in that manner. And as a shy guy, that was exciting for God to use me. Because yeah. in my experience, it tended to be more outgoing people. And so and because of some of those things, I never saw myself being a pastor. And we're at a Denny's in Virginia Beach, Virginia, sitting around a table similar to this in the middle of Denny's and my buddies are all there in a pastor, a pastor I'd never met. He's the pastor of one of my buddies of a church he went to there in the Virginia beach area. And that pastor kept staring at me. And, and I know this is this Baptist guy saying this. So it really surprised me. He reaches across the table, grabs my hand and he, and he starts speaking in tongues, which I'd never been around. And I'm just saying what happened. I know people get uncomfortable with that, but that's what happened. I'm not going to lie. And then he starts saying, you're called to be a pastor, and you're going to speak to these large crowds wow. of people. And, and he went on to say stuff, and I've got to be honest, I'm like, who does this guy think he is? I mean, that's what I thought. I'm like, these guys are weird. Like, he has no right to go tell me what to do. And he obviously doesn't know me. Dude, I'm a nerdy engineer. I am not speaking yeah. in front of crowds nu of people. Nu nuclear engineer and pastor. I mean, those, they couldn't. Yeah, God, God can't those use that. So just months later, I'm, I'm in Ohio, where I'm from. I'm in this little town, Tiffin, Ohio. Some people know it. Uh, many people don't. And I'm at Denny's again with a guy. And I'm having a Coke. Didn't drink coffee at the time. He's drinking a coffee. And I'm talking. And the guy, he's just a lay person, but a Christian. And he just interrupts me and says, you know what? You're not to be, supposed to be doing this. You're called to be a pastor. In fact, you're going to be a pastor soon. God already hasn't lined up. Like, I look at these words, right? Every day ordained for you is written as book for one of them came to be from Psalm 139. Yeah. Or here in Jeremiah, God, God telling him, before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a yeah. prophet to the nations. And at this point, he probably had no clue it was coming. Right. Now, he's from a priestly family, right? One of the priests of Anathoth. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not like he wasn't going to be used, but as a prophet, I imagine it surprised him. I was surprised. And, and, and kind of irritated these people telling me what to do. And I know some of us need to hear over and over, we're slow. But again, uh, like Moses, when Moses got his call with the burning bush and God spoke to him, he was resistant to the point. The Bible says in Exodus, God was angry with him. And I don't know if I was making God angry, but I, I wasn't responding uh, well. <laughs> he, used the, he used those people to wake you up. To smack me upside the head, him. maybe? Yes. Because I wasn't hearing. I was not open. To that. I was not open to it. And I go to complain to my pastor at the time in the church I grew up in. And I sat in his office. I let him know what these people were doing and how wrong they were. And his response to me was, you can't run from God forever. I believe you're called in ministry. <laughs> That's awesome. So I went home kind of discouraged. And then going to God, like, I, I don't sense it. I, I really was praying, but not sensing it. Eventually, uh, and, and this is important that my home church wanted me to be their youth pastor, and I declined. And so all this is coming at me, and I'm like, I, I didn't see that being me. I did agree to help with the youth, but I was not willing to be their youth pastor or the youth director. So what I do is um, I do help, and I go to this training, and I'm at this church, Black Hawk Baptist Church in Indiana, um, Dr. David Jeremiah used to be at that church. Dr. Elmer Towns was the speaker for like this Sunday school and youth and kids training. And when he's speaking, he said, someone out, some of you out there, you're not called just to be a teacher or help. You are called into ministry. And it was like the Holy Spirit said, that's you. So I went forward, didn't tell anybody. And eventually from there went on into ministry and naively, 
like Jeremiah, I, I suppose I imply that about Jeremiah, hearing the words of God in the promise, thinking, wow, this is a really supernatural call that God's really set me apart, so this is just going to happen, and I'm not going to face any resistance. Everyone's going to see it. It's supernatural. Everyone's going to affirm it, and I'm going to have no resistance to do ministry. Yeah, it doesn't work gonna, that way. It's going to be way easier than everyone else has because the supernatural call of God. And naively, at 20-some years old, that's what I thought. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, ultimately, that ha you have to resolve in your own heart the call of God for you. You do. Uh, even though God does use people. I, I know that uh, I've had a couple people come to me and just say, hey, God's told me that you're going to be our worship pastor. And in my heart, I'm like, well, as soon as he tells me that, that's right. he confirms it in my heart, then, then I'll call you. Uh, so it's it's glad that ultimately God affirmed it to you in your heart. Right. I appreciate, as God was with whether Jeremiah, you, Pastor Lane, Moses, uh, Queen Esther, in different ways he uses us myself, that he's persistent and patient. Yes. And he's the one who gets the glory. He's the one who's doing the real work. We're just called to obey, to heed, to share. And in that, it doesn't mean it's always going to go well. Something that was a challenge for me, and I understand most of the people probably listening, you're not in vocational ministry, but you are called to be doing ministry, and it doesn't mean it's easy. As pastors, I'm sure you would agree with me, those people that you uphold and you share with me what a blessing they are, they're people in the ministry. Most of them, they have other jobs but they're trustworthy, they're there, they're faithful. Things don't always go their way. Sometimes you have to correct them as their lead, right? Yes. But they're humble enough to be taught and to grow and to love you. And sometimes I'm sure you're wrong, right? I'm wrong at times. And, and they're there week after week, month after month, year after year, you build a church with those people. And when right. we as all follow that call and we're faithful, as was Jeremiah, Moses, Queen Esther, God uses us to do powerful stuff and change the world. Amen. Amen. Well, I like this in uh, Jeremiah, you know, as soon as God told him that he, he's called, first thing that comes out of his mouth is kind of excuses. Yes. Uh, you know, I don't know how to speak. I can't I, relate I, to I, that, I, but yeah. Young. I was going to ask you, did you ever have <laughs> any of those? Uh, yes. Fe feeling that your skill set didn't quite match maybe what uh, your calling was. You're hitting the nail on the head. For, for me, that, that exactly was it, because I was so shy. Mm. Because uh, I was not one to want to speak in front of people. Uh, in high school, I had to give a speech. And while I was giving a speech in high school as a junior, I was so scared. I mean, I, I knew months ahead I had to do this, and I was, it was a stress for me the whole time. When I finally got to do it, I did all this work, and I was a really good student. And, I mean, I was accepted to all the colleges I applied to. And I had my note cards, and I just froze because I was so nervous. Maybe 15 kids in the class, I don't remember. And my teacher said this, it's ridiculous anyone would get that nervous just to give a speech. That was me. And yet these people are telling me I'm called to be a pastor. I felt like you're wrong, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm just gonna be honest with you, for me, I know this isn't everybody, but in, in, in my field, I knew I, was, I could make a lot of money and give a lot to God. And in my rationale, that's sure, how I'm gonna sure. serve God. But, God. but God gets kind of bossy and acts like he's in charge. <laughs> And says, no, I'm in charge. You do what I say. And he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't. He needs willing vessels. That's all he needs. He's supernatural God. All powerful God. He doesn't. He's not like, as long as Craig has these gifts, then I can use him. Yeah. And well, that's you know, important for us to remember. Absolutely. And that kind of leads us into this uh, next scripture, which is from James 4 through 6. It says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor. To the humble. That's right. And I think had had uh, you or even I approached our call to ministry as I've got this, uh, I know what to do. My skill set is perfect for this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rock this. And uh, almost like a sense where you don't even need God. You don't need the Spirit. You don't need the Holy Spirit leading you. And uh, that definitely shows a proud heart. And I think God calls people who need to rely on Him. Yes. And uh, so what, sure. what's your thoughts on just being uh, humility and, and, min and ministry? Well, I'm, I'm, I always got to grow in that. And I would say to you, obviously, at the beginning, it was more about as humble. But I'm going to be honest, at some level, I got a bit prideful thinking, man, I had this supernatural call when I realized mm -hmm. it and finally surrendered. And it's crazy to be prideful when I resisted all that I did. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. I don't, well, where does pride come from? That's pretty right. stupid, but that's the reality for me, if I'm honest. And there are seasons where I'm more humble than others, and, and I, I pray over time I'm growing in humility, but God teaches us that. And that's important. Like, he opposes the pride. Yes, he opposes. You don't want that. Yeah. Because you're not going to win against God. If he opposes you, yeah. he wins. It's not that he's just not going to show favor. That's right. But he's going to oppose. That's yeah. right. But he gives grace. That's the word there, favor, to the humble. And those I've seen God use the most are those who are humble. And sometimes he humbles you as you're being used by him. You know, whether however God's using you, and most of you, you have some other vocation. You're a homemaker, you're a teacher, you're a doctor, you're a factory worker, whatever it is that you are. And uh, maybe you're retired. And you're doing ministry, I pray, because you're called to it. If you're not, I love you, but you're disobeying God. We need to be used by God in these ways and, and be faithful and, and, and serve in the way God has gifted and called us in, in ways. And sometimes we don't enjoy what we're doing. Yeah. Sometimes he calls us to do some things that, right. that we're not loving in the moment. Uh, I, I know Jeremiah felt that way. I know Moses felt that way. I know I felt that way. I imagine you have, Pastor Lane. Yeah, and I, and I see in here that there really is a difference between being prideful and being confident in God. That's right. Because right here, I mean. Being bold God, in God is yeah. different than being bold in you. Yeah, God tell, tells him, hey, don't be afraid. Go in with confidence, basically. I'm going to give you the words to say. And so I think there is a, a, a boldness in, being, in walking in that call of mm -hmm. God that is different from being prideful. And, and when, I, when, I, when I picture those, those that I see God use the most are humble people. Mm -hmm. Those who have had the greatest impact in my life, they're humble people. My mentors, uh, humble people. And I, I look back and, and I think to myself, I was naive. I thought, man, because I'm called, people are going to really listen. And I think of this, when I was a youth director, I eventually did agree to be the youth director at my home church growing up. And I'm not trying to beat people up, but I'm just going to be honest. Part of it was my lack of wisdom and discernment as just a young 20-some-year-old guy in ministry. And some of it was, I think, a hard heart. This is really important, something I've learned in ministry. And I know I'm guilty of it, but I really see that in people I lead in the church. The average Christian really wants what they want more than they want people to know Jesus. Yeah. True. And they respond to leadership, to churches, to other Christians when they're not getting what they want in immature ways very often. And so there I am as the youth director, and we were bringing in youth. Uh, some of them, they're not from Christian homes. Some of them were poor. Some of them were. Some of them were well to do. But they were coming in. They didn't know how to behave in church, and maybe they're kind of loud. Uh, they didn't, maybe some of them were all ratty, you know, cut-up jeans, didn't dress up, and I was in a more traditional church. And no clue how to use a hymnal during the sermon. They're talking during music. They're looking around, not singing. Some of them weren't even believers yet. Some of them were believers. And as a youth director, I was really discouraged because people were complaining about it. Sure. I'm thinking, how are you missing the, the mission? Right. And then I go to preach. And my buddy, who was also raised in that same church, we're the same age, he was a worship pastor actually down here in Florida. And I was a youth director up there in that church in Ohio. And so he led worship in a more contemporary way. He was a church plant. He was oh. a worship pastor. And, and I went and preached, and I was really smart. I moved the pulpit uh -oh. <laughs> and put a music stand there to preach from <laughs> without asking anybody. I just didn't. I'm allowed to. I'm the youth director. Uh, that went over great. <laughs> and and now, while some people loved the message and the youthfulness and those things, I had people who taught my buddy and me in, in Sunday school, if they're going to make changes, I'm leaving the church. People love change, don't they? And I remembered how discouraged I was and, and just, I don't know the word I want to use, but I was kind of blown away and dismayed and like, what in the world? And then you, I, I got to be careful because you get really judgmental sure. and think I'm always right. Now, number one, if I'm my age now with 20-some years of ministry experience, I'm talking to 20-some-year-old Craig and say, hey, buddy, that may not have been the best thing to do. Yeah. Don't do that yet. Yeah, don't do that yet. But nonetheless, um, People are not always on the mission. They're more about what they want. And not, not to beat them up, but I need to respond in humility as the leader. Yeah. I need to respond in humility. And when I, I look at those who are prideful, I, I remember this specifically. I'm not trying to beat other, other people up when they're down. But I remember in, in, we planted a church in Ohio. And it grew to be very large. And um, it was really neat coming out of seminary to have that happen, start with nothing, grow to church into the thousands. And I remember a staff person 
at the time, kind of the church of what's happening now in our group of churches was Mark Driscoll and Mars Hill. Mm. He's writing books, and he was becoming pretty popular nationally, and he was kind of rough. Uh, he would cuss in, in sermons, and uh, he would really speak to younger people, and he was brash and offensive. And I remember a staff person saying, you guys, there's a, a, a teaching pad. We team taught at this church, you know, in many services, and, and, and I would I taught about half the time. He taught half the time, sometimes more. And uh, he was, over time, kind of turned the church over to me. He was the senior teaching pastor, and I was the teaching pastor. And the staff person said, you guys got to be more like him. So we read a book by this guy, Mark Criscoll, and I watched one sermon. And I'm not trying to act like I'm prophetic and I'm always right all the time. But I watched it, and I was like, something isn't right with that guy. Mm. I'm not seeing the heart of Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit. I'm seeing pride. Like yeah. One sermon, I'm like, dude, we're not going there. And sure enough, the guy falls. I'm not celebrating his fall. I'm just saying I saw pride there. And the mentors I had who were very effective and grew successful churches, having an impact for the kingdom, they were humble. Yeah. I wanted to be more like that. Yeah, well, for a while, you know, I mean, Mars Hill, they did have great success. Yes. And so the natural thing for people in the congregation at other churches, like, oh, well, look what they're doing. We need to be more like that. Why can't we be more like that? Right. And that's not necessarily the way to go. No, we need to be who we're called to be. Yes. Right. You need to be called who, who you're called to be. Absolutely. And I look at Moses. He was the most humble man on earth. I look at. Uh, and he was a great leader. He was. And, and this, is, this is something that strikes me, not just because he had such an impact, but Billy Graham, not, not perfect. Um, I imagine some things that he would teach. Maybe I don't agree with everything, but, but God certainly had an impact, and he was inspirational to me. And Walker Inman, who was a member here of our church, he passed away last year, pro golfer, Hall of Famer. He golfed with Billy Graham. He'd been around Billy Graham. That's pretty cool. And uh, he taught my, I mean, Walker taught my son golf. So he's around Billy Graham. He, he knew him. My great uncle, Jack, he's passed away, but he had special time with Billy Graham. Uh, dean of my seminary uh, used to be, he's retired now. He was around Billy Graham. And all of them shared how humble he was. Mm -hmm. And you could see why God was able to use him because he was humble. And humility just matters. And understanding that, hey, when you're doing ministry, it's not always going to go your way. You be humble. You continue on the path. You don't stop, and you can be bold in the call when you're facing resistance. This is important. You stay humble when you succeed, quote unquote, and humble when it's not going well. Because yeah. here's what happens right. when, when you're in ministry. When it's not going well, people jump on you and tell you you must be wrong. Right. If things aren't going exactly right, or you have a setback, or COVID, or whatever it is, they're like, okay, now's my opportunity to tell pastor off. Yeah, sometimes it's the, the exact opposite, where people are are... Uh, lifting That's you right. up and building I've, you and up. I've had that. Yeah. And they're telling me how great I am, and right. sometimes I believe it. Right. And I'm, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not that great. God is. Yeah, we always have to just rely on God and His Spirit. So for the people who are watching the podcast uh, today, tonight, whenever they're watching, uh, how would you encourage them to fulfill and walk in the call that God has given them, even though they may not be a full-time vocational minister? Well, what I would say is that just like King David, who wrote Psalm 139, or Jeremiah, who wrote, obviously, the book of Jeremiah, or myself, or Pastor Lane, uh, you may not be called a vocational ministry, but God is the sovereign over your life. And every day ordained for you was written in this book before one of them came to be. And if you've called on Jesus as Savior and Lord, you're his forever. You are set apart. You are a saint. You are holy. And, and God's hand upon you is the security of life, right? Not, not what the world Amen. says, not the success of life, but what God thinks of you. And that you rest in that, that you're bold in him, not in yes. your gifts, not because you have a platform like a Billy Graham, but because you have God as your Savior and Lord. And then you, you serve in light of that reality and you trust him. The same God who did those great things through Jeremiah or Moses, or Queen Esther, or... Uh, Peter, the apostle, is the same God working in your life. Amen. I love that. I just want to reiterate the scripture that we opened with. And uh, this is for you out there who is listening. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Mm. Before you were born, I set you, appoint, I, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And uh, Jesus did know you before mm -hmm. you were born. He set you apart 
for whatever it is that he's called you to do, whether you work at Starbucks or you're a CEO at a corporation, uh, God has still called you and uh, he will provide you all of the skill set you need to fulfill the calling that he's, he's made in you. Anything else you want to share or we're all done? I just want to I just want to encourage you to to just to give thanks that God loves you so much Amen. that He gave you special gifts to be used by Him and His plan is to use you in powerful ways for His glory. Yeah, well, thanks for joining us at for this episode of the West Side Culture Podcast. I'm sure we'll do a few more in the coming months. And remember, we have services on Sunday, nine o'clock a.m., ten thirty a.m. here at Fort Pierce and also at our South Beach campus. If you can't join us in person, we'd love to have you join us online. Hope you have a great week.